hello. This is episode 18, a solo episode with me, myself, Tiffany Hinton, and we are talking all about raised bed gardening, building our raised beds, and why you want a raised bed today on Cultivating Guts. Hello, it's Tiffany, and welcome back to Cultivating Guts, a podcast where we discuss gardening, homesteading, gut health, and following our intuition. I am so excited to be back with you guys. I've had so many insightful moments and ideas about really important topics that I'm wanting to share on the podcast. And today I am simultaneously video recording so you can catch us over at YouTube on our YouTube channel and join the conversation there. Subscribe, like our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Tiffany Hinton. And uh, there's some visuals that you might want to see in today's podcast. And if you're on YouTube, hello. So good to see you. And so so excited you're here. Welcome. So before we get started, I want to make sure you subscribe, rate, and review the Cultivating Guts podcast and send me a screenshot of your review to tiffany at gfmomcertified.com and I will send you a four-day hacking your health gut detox plan that uses natural vegetables that you can grow right in your own garden to heal your gut. Also, as you're listening, screenshot your favorite part, share it with us on Instagram at gfmomcertified and at Cultivating Guts. I love reposting and I'm excited to hear what you thought of today's episode. I am so grateful you're here and all of our amazing listeners for helping us grow the podcast and share it with more people. And now we'll jump right into our show. Hello, hello, it's Tiffany, and welcome back to Cultivating Guts. Today, we're talking all about raised bed gardening, and it is like perfect timing here. This episode is coming out uh, the um, April 5th, I believe. Uh, yes, April 5th, and it is the perfect time to, especially in Zone 5 and anywhere south of Zone 5, if you're in the gardening zones, to put together your raised beds to start to build a wonderful soil and just so much goodness. And um, so I want to talk a little bit about building raised beds, things to consider, types of wood to use, maybe some misconceptions, things like that. Um, and also, how do you fill the raised bed with dirt? How tall do you want it? What do you, right? All these questions that people have about raised beds and like, well, why can't I just take a rototiller and rip up my grass? Well, absolutely you can. Nobody's stopping you. It's, um, I personally find raised bed gardening creates structure for me. It creates a container. It gives me a space where I know I can keep it weeded, where I know I can compost, where I can add compost, where I can plan <laughs> the Capricorn on me, right? Wants this structure, uh, but where I can plan rows and I can make things straight and I can rotate crops year after year and I can keep the garden contained instead of sprawling or keep the creeping myrtle out of the garden instead of, you know, invasive plants and things like that. So for me, the raised bed is the way to go. Other people choose raised beds because they can create height and depending on their low back or other things happening, they don't have to bend over or get down on the ground. Um, it also allows you to create a space that's maintainable for you and not overwhelming. It creates design in your yard or in your front yard, your backyard on your space. It creates an architectural feature. Uh, it can create a wandering path depending on how you set your beds up. Uh, there's so many different reasons you might want to go with a raised bed. And so think about that. The other thing I'm going to, you guys, if you're listening to this episode and you're not in the car, or you're able to grab a piece of paper, you may want to do that and an ink pen and make some notes as we go, because I'm going to ask you some questions and it will lead you hopefully at the end of this podcast to know if a raised bed is for you and what your next steps and actions are that you will take in order to get your garden up and running this year. I'm super excited though. If you ever need any help with that, you need a consultation or you need me to come out and build your bed for you, uh, let me know because that is one thing I love to do. So this this past spring and even last fall, I walk with one of my neighbors quite frequently and we we walk around the lake in the area and stuff. And she's been saying, I want this bed. Have you seen this? I want this garden. I want this. And it's this U shape. And then they put the, um, you can use PVC pipe or you can use aluminum or whatever, right? But they put this um, basically a high hoop, right? Garden dome over it. And then they cover it in plastic and it creates like a greenhouse and then they remove it. And it's like an all season deal. 
Uh, and they can build a frame with a, a door on it because of the U shape. And I kept telling her, oh, that's so easy to build. And she's like, I don't understand. <laughs> And, and and I would send her little Instagram videos of similar gardens or Instagram videos where you could use hula hoops uh, instead of having to buy like the PVC pipe if you just need a low hoop, right? Or um, – and finally she's like, okay, let's just build it. Let's just get the wood and let's just build it. And so last week, super fun, I loaded up my miter saw, loaded up my tools and a tape measure and a pencil and a torque drill, torque um, driver. And she had gotten the wood and she'd gotten the screws, the star headed wood screws, three inches. And we built it. We measured it out. Um, previously, the week prior, I should tell you, I dropped off some string and some uh, spray paint and some stakes and had her map where she wanted it in her yard and spray paint the grass, like a, the lines where it would go and make sure like, does that feel right? When you look out there and you see that out there, does that feel like where you want your garden to go? Is there sun hitting that six hours a day? Like you can monitor it once you have the paint on the grass. And the cool thing about spray painting the grass is when the grass grows and you mow it, the spray paint's gone in case you want the garden somewhere else or you realize that that's not the ideal space for it after it sits there for about a week and you continue to look at it. And so uh, it took about an hour, hour and a half, and we had it built. And now she's putting the cardboard down and she's putting the wood inside and filling it with dirt and compost and just getting super excited to be planting. And that is the super fun part. And so it doesn't have to take a long time, but it is for me a necessity to have a raised bed. Okay, so here we go with the questions and things to consider, right? How much space do you have in your yard? How much space do you have that you want to create a garden in? Do you have like four feet by six feet? Do you have 20 feet by eight feet? Do you have like, what is the space? And then the other thing is, what is your climate? Right? Is it super wet? Because then we're going to have to create a lot of drainage in the soil. Or is it a dry climate where we need to put things in the soil that help keep moisture? Right? And so there's, there's tips and tricks there. So what is your climate? What do you want to grow in your raised bed? Do you need depth? Are you going to be growing carrots and um, parsnip and horseradish that need space for roots? Or are you growing things like green beans and cucumbers and tomatoes that need space above the ground to vine and sweet peas and pole beans and all that stuff? Or maybe you need both. Maybe you need depth and you need something for them to climb in height, not a trellis. So think about that. What's the purpose of your garden? Is your garden for herbs? Is it in a potterage? Is it for things that it'll put in a pot and cook? Is it for beauty? Is it for flowers? Is it for crafting? Is it, what is your garden for? Is it to make tea? So think about that and make a note on your paper that you went and got. So what are your, what's your garden for? And then are there any certain plants that you gravitate towards that you just feel like, oh, I have to have those. I have to grow strawberries. Just, they're just amazing. Oh, I have to grow dill. They attract butterflies. They smell so good. And you can use them in so many cooking dishes. What are those plants? Write down like three to five things that you know that you have to grow. And don't worry about like, will they grow in my climate? I don't think I can grow them. I have a black thumb. I don't want to hear any of that. Like just write down three to five things that you think you have to grow. They just speak to your soul. Your intuition is telling you that for whatever reason, you need to grow these things. And will anybody else be using your space? This is important. Are you going to have kids out there? Do you need to have space for them to garden? Do you need things that are easy for them to pick and to water? Um, are you going to allow your neighbors to come into your space? I saw a beautiful, beautiful concept that I love in the Proven Winners Garden Design Catalog. They have a table um, with a garden in the middle of the table, like a raised bed garden goes down the center of this table and it's edibles. So it's a little bit of chives or spring onions and there's strawberries and there's cherry tomatoes and there's these little miniature peppers. And so as you're sitting at the table, you can kind of like pick things and eat it or put it on your plate and it's beautiful. So anyway, it was awesome concept. And it's another way to think about a raised bed, especially if you have a limited space and you only really have a patio, you could put the raised bed right in the table. 
<laughs> which is so cool, or right in the back of the bench, right, that you sit on. Uh, do you have any pets, local wildlife? Do you think need to think about birds and squirrels, or do, do you need to think about poisonous plants, or do you have, you know, outdoor cats and things that you might want a cat plant, cat nip or cat mint? I have both growing. Um, we also have um, nettle growing, and I noticed some of the different animals come and eat the nettle, so it's good for them. And then we need to think about cost, right? How much do you want to spend on your garden? Okay. I'm going to pull out. If you're on the video, hi guys on YouTube. This is the Green Witch Goddess Gardening Workshop PDF book from last year. It's actually out on cultivatingguts.com. You can get, you can still download the course, get all the videos, get this, and it takes you through. There's a whole bunch of modules, but it's a whole online course, our Green Witch Goddess Workshop. So I'm going to pull this out though because it has some really cool cheat stuff and I'm going to walk you through it. First and foremost, if you were to download this, it's got raised bed plans. So this is the this is the, the inexpensive way to do the raised bed. So let's talk through this one for a second. The inexpensive way to build a raised bed, which used to be around $25, I will tell you. Now I was at Home Depot last week in order to get these um, two by eight boards that are uh, eight feet long, they're $14 a board. So now you're doing 14 times three of those. So you're at, I can't do math. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. Uh, four times three is 12. You're $42 to get three boards. So you're going to need three two by eights. They're eight feet long. You're going to cut one of those in half. Now, if you don't have a saw at home, you know what's cool? Home Depot will cut that board in half for you for free. You can cut like three boards for free, at least our local Home Depot. So when you go in to get your three boards, get two of them full length, get one, cut it in half. So you've got four foot, four foot, eight foot, eight foot. Now you have a rectangle. This is my go-to size for gardening. And it makes a 32 square foot box. And if you've seen our podcast with Junk Seeds or you've seen any of the other stuff with Junk, junk Seeds I've done in the past, you'll know that you can plant one crop in one square foot. So you could plant 32 different types of vegetables and herbs and things in that four by eight box. Now you could do traditional farming and plant rows as well. I, I still go with rows or with groupings, but gives you space. Now this one is only eight inches deep. What does that mean? That means that in those eight inches, you're not doing a bunch of like super root carrots unless you have space for them to go down into the ground below the bed. So that would mean that you didn't put plastic down. You could do cardboard. You could do burlap. You could do things that are biodegradable that create nutrients for the worms. But you won't be putting like plastic and then the raised bed, okay? So also I don't like using plastic because it leaches and then you end up with toxic chemicals in your food. And I'm not a huge fan of plastic. So go with the cardboard boxes. Go with the burlap fabric, the untreated, raw natural, things like that um, down. And then why do we do that? So you don't have to dig up the grass. They block out the sunlight. They kill the grass. And then you start to layer on top of that. So basically, you can take those four boards that we just talked about, those two four, four footers and that eight footer, and screw them in with three inch screws. And you have a rectangle. You go set the rectangle out where you want your garden and you're good to go. Now, you could do this any shape you want. Like I said, we just built this U for the neighbor on it. 24 feet by 10 feet by 24 feet, and then the inside is 20 feet. So she's got this huge space. Um, if you want a little bit more security and stability, you can take a two by four and screw the corners into two by fours. If you do the two by fours in the corners, I always leave an extra three inches underneath and I drive that down so that the raised bed doesn't shift or move in the, in the ground. It's actually like staked in, okay? So that is a super, super easy way to build a rectangular raised bed. Now, I have another little raised bed that we built. Actually, I have several in my yard because we have over 350 square feet of raised beds in our yard. I have a little tiny one that's a two foot by four foot. I love growing herbs in there and cilantro and rosemary and thyme and having those easy and they that sits right by the sidewalk. So that's a tiny one. You could do an L shape. Um, you can also get the, the deck metal deck clamps and you can go up 
like eight inches and then stack another one. And so you're 16 inches tall and then stack another one. So then you're like 24 inches tall. And then you can grow carrots and potatoes and all this stuff in these deeper boxes. Okay, so if you're on a budget, you're going to go with pressure-treated pine. Currently in the United States, pressure-treated pine does not have arsenic in it. It's not toxic. All the gardening websites now since about 2008 and moving forward, pressure-treated pine is perfect. It's going to last you four to eight years before it rots out, and you're going to have great results with it. Now, if you want to upgrade, you can go with a raised bed built out of cedar. Last year, my cedar raised beds, same size, four by eights. Uh, my cedar beds are 12 inches tall. Uh, they cost me about $200 a bed. Now, why did I go with cedar for those? I went with cedar for those because they're ornamental. They sit on the edge of the property between us and the neighbor. They have a trellis in between them, and they're full of wildflowers for bees and butterflies only. So they're not for me to be out there gardening and doing whatever. They are um, there for pollinators. And I wanted them to look nice knowing where I was putting them. So again, you can go with the cedar. The cedar is supposed to last longer. We'll see what happens in the Illinois winter if it actually does with all the snow and stuff. But the cedar is supposed to last 10 to 15 years. So it has a longer life for the cost. Okay. So that's basically things to think about as you do your raised bed. Now, when you do your soil composition, like I said, we're going to start with primarily cardboard boxes, paper bags, things like that. Put those on the bottom. You can lay them out even before you put the bed on, the, the wooden part, so it holds it down. Then you can do a layer of sticks. If you've got, you know, sticks from the trees that have fallen or whatever. And then you can do some leaves if you've got some leaves or some decomposting foliage and things like that. Don't put weeds in there. Don't put dandelion heads and seeds and all that, just like leaves and things like that. Then you can start to put in the soil, right? You can get some good topsoil. You can add some garden soil. And then if you need drainage, but you also need moisture retention, which I know sounds strange, you're going to add perlite, vermicular light, add some worm casings. You can buy them in a bag. I like to throw in banana peels, eggshells that have been crushed, and I like to build this soil that's just this great composition of stuff, right? And invite the worms. And if you want to buy some worms from the local um, fish shop or bait shop and toss the worms in there, that's even better. Go for it. Like build that all up. Make this thing so it's so nutrient. It smells like a farm again. It doesn't smell like it's sterile and organic. Um, make it smell organic, Okay. That's going to get all your dirt in your raised bed, which I love, love, love. So for that four by eight, if we're doing that, you're going to need about 20 bags of garden soil, right? And those bags come in uh, two cubic units, right? Two cubic yards or whatever. Uh, so about 20 bags will fill 32 square feet. <laughs> And then you're going to add one two cubic unit perlite, one bag vermicular light, and two bags mushroom compost. Most of the time, mushroom compost is not made from mushrooms. It's made from horse manure or cattle manure. But um, oh, and if you can get rabbit poop from a neighbor, that's even awesome. So any of that stuff, like add it, add it, add it in, mix it up, put your gloves on, get in there and enjoy it. And that's going to be perfect. Okay, other things, like I said, that you can add to this dirt mixture to create this perfect environment for your seedlings. You could add some sand for drainage. Definitely, you could add some sand. You could add dirt from your yard if you're like leveling or doing something else. Eggshells, banana peels, we already talked about, right? Another compostable. So if you've got a juicer and you end up with what my girls like to call unicorn poop that comes out the side of the juicer, you can toss that in and mix that in your soil too, okay? All of that is awesome. And that is your raised bed. So what else do you have to think about? You have to think about what are you going to plant, right? So in your little note sheet, we already talked a little bit about this, but what is the purpose of your garden? Is your garden to create things to grow for beauty? Is it for things to eat? Is it for medicinals? What is it? 
How much space are you doing? Because that'll help you map out your plan. And how much time can you devote to your garden? So if you can only devote like an hour a week, you may not want to go any bigger than one raised bed. But if you're like, oh, I know I'm going to devote like at least a half hour every day, which is what I personally love to do during the summer is spend at least a half hour. And I normally focus on one bed a day and I work through the whole yard that way or two beds a day now it seems like or three because we've multiplied and expanded. Um, then you want to go bigger so that you have things that you can spend time on that you enjoy, that you can ground and you can nourish and you can talk to and water and all of that stuff. The other thing you might think about for a raised bed is as you're building it, to go ahead and put the the drip lines and the irrigation lines in and run any plumbing that you want to run underground if you want to go to that extreme or to run water hoses. You might even want to find some solar lights. I love putting solar lights like in the corner of a raised bed to create some ambience, right, as you walk through in the evening with the paths. You may even want to put a garden flag in there or um, put a little what they call a shepherd's hook and then you can put a, a hanging thing or a crystal or a wind chime, any of that stuff. You know, decorate your raised bed. Make it look like you. Let it speak from your soul. I'm kind of looking to see what else is on here. Okay. If you are doing multiple, again, if you're on YouTube, you can see this. If you're doing multiple raised beds together, Make sure you have two feet of walkway in between each one, at least two feet. The reason you want two feet there is because you can get a wheelbarrow through, you can get a wagon through, you can pull, and you've got room to like squat or to put your bushel baskets if you're harvesting. And so at least two feet, doesn't have to be three feet unless you need handicap accessible, but at least two feet because then you can get most of your garden tools and your wheelbarrow and everything through in between the raised beds. Okay, um, remember to water. This is all maintenance. We'll do maintenance a different day on a different, different podcast. Okay, so last minute tips. This is a shorter podcast, but I'd love to see you guys get your raised beds built. Uh, make sure that wherever you plant it, you're getting at least six hours of sunlight. Morning sun, afternoon sun, a mixture, it doesn't matter. At least six hours of sunlight. Make sure that you primarily are watering in the morning if possible. Okay, before it gets too hot. Uh, don't overwater, by the way, and don't leave water on the leaves of the plants, like water as much as you can underneath. So sometimes those irrigation lines are helpful. They're not too expensive. Uh, choose plants that are best for your area as much as possible. Why do I say that? Because they're going to grow better. So here's a great example of that, right? I am in a zone five, supposedly. Sometimes I think I'm in zone 4B, lower because it's so cold sometimes in Chicago, but we're in zone five. So green beans grow great here. Peas grow great until it gets hot. <laughs> Strawberries, awesome, right? Watermelon, not so great. Uh, it just doesn't. It's not hot enough. Pole beans, tried those last year. I'm gonna try them again this year, but it didn't get hot enough and it was too wet, right? So when you're looking through your garden catalogs, look for things that are for your zone. There are hybrids. There are different variations. So you can. Cucumbers grow awesome. By the way, cucumbers love eggshells. They like that calcium. They just do. Um, you want to get your raised beds built because it's going to be time to start to sow those seeds outside very, very soon coming up in about a month. So with that, let, ask me any questions you have about raised bed gardening. Leave some comments. We'll put this out on YouTube. Um, and again, if you are interested in learning all about raised beds and learning all about getting your garden together, we've got a live class coming up April 30th right here in Chicagoland in my own garden. And you will drop the link in the show notes so you can attend that. That's our Green Witch Workshop. We have last year's Green Witch Garden Workshop that was turned into a whole online course with downloadables, quizzes. Yes, there's quizzes. I know. You got to make sure you know what you're doing, right? Um, uh, along with multiple modules, multiple videos that you can watch over and over again. And so that is out there as well at www.cultivatingguts.com. So thank you for joining. All right, you guys. We I hope you enjoyed this episode. 
share with me what your favorite part was and share with me what are you going to be building? What size is your raised bed going to be? Are you going to try out like that whole concept of putting the raised bed inside the picnic table? Uh, Love, love, love to continue this conversation with you on Instagram at GFMomCertified. Uh, Ask me any questions you have. I'm here for you and I'm excited to see all your benefits from gardening this year. Satnam, love you guys. So if you love this episode, remember to share it with your friends and send it to anyone who may love this inspiration and information that we shared. To get my newest book, The Ultimate Green Witch Gardening Planner, you can visit Amazon or you can actually visit our Etsy shop, Lily and the Green Witch, or you can visit www.cultivatingguts.com. Pick up our Ultimate Green Witch Gardening Planner to get started this year, to get your garden planned, to get it documented and to have a journal and a planner for the next six months that you can keep track of moon cycles along with so many other things, including the correspondence from your garden and all the herbal properties, planting guides. There is so much in there, so, so much. Friends and foes, things to plant next to each other, things not to plant next to each other, so many fun things. You can get all those details over at www.cultivatingguts.com and you will see everything you need to get started with your gardening projects. The other thing I want to remind you is April 30th, we have a brand new live in-person Green Witch Gardening Workshop right here in Chicagoland in my own garden. Super fun to be getting together live. We're going to be talking all things gardening. So much fun, inspiration, and just hands-on topics. You're going to get uh, Green Witch Gardening planners when you come to the workshop with your ticket. And it's just going to be a super, super fun day. And so for information on that, you can head over to www.cultivatingguts.com and sign up for that workshop. And you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining us.